Hey everybody, it's me Woody. Sorry if I look or sound a little bit different today. I'm traveling and this is my mobile setup. So in 22, in addition to being a virtual character and doing all this virtual character stuff, I also want to do some more traditional animation projects in Unreal Engine. So recently I was working on one such project and I realized, oh man, this is kind of difficult when it comes time to do pre-production. I had cooked up a bunch of storyboards for the project and I was trying to work together an animatic. I don't really know how to put together an animatic in Unreal. Now I could do it in another program, but that just feels like an extra step, especially if I'm using Sequencer to do any cuts. I figured uh, maybe I should just try to figure this out. So I did. I found a way to import images into Sequencer. All right, now here I am in Unreal Engine 4.26. So this is actually pretty simple. We're gonna start with a plane. Just add it to the scene and pick it up and rotate it. Now before we go any further, we may not have rotated it the right way. I'm gonna punch in with the F key, and I'm gonna add an image. Ah, so we just need to move it 90 degrees the other direction. Now everything's cool so far, but our aspect ratio is really wrong. So I happen to know that all of my storyboards are standard 1080p HD, which means everything is 16 by nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make changes that reflect that in the scale. So on one side, X, I'm gonna write 16, and the other side, Y, I'm gonna write nine. Now when we zoom out, everything looks correct. Next, we're gonna want a camera. Let's go ahead and grab a Cine camera actor, spin him around so that we can see everything correctly. Now you notice we're only seeing part of the image, and that's actually okay. We actually wanna see even less of it at the beginning because we wanna change our focal length. We don't want any distortion on our frames, so it's time to increase the lensing. Anywhere after 50 is good. I'm gonna set it to 70 just for safety. Now we can pull it out and adjust it so that we can see everything. Go ahead and pilot the camera to make fine adjustments. And you may think that looks pretty crummy. The exposure here is totally wrong. And you're right. Let's open this automatically generated scooter material. All we have to do is change our base texture to emissive. Now, if you wanna be fancy about it, you can add a multiply and press S and click to add a scalar parameter. Let's call it brightness. Change the default value to one, save it, and now look what we got over here. We pilot our camera. It looks exactly like we want it to. Now we want to turn this into a material instance. So let's promote this to a parameter. We're going to call this storyboard. Now right click and create material instance. I'm going to call this MI underscore storyboard. We'll rename the original too, just to be organized. Now let's create a dynamic material instance. We're going to start by promoting our plane. Let's call it storyboard plane. Go to the construction script, drag out, find create dynamic material instance. And here we're gonna find storyboard. Select MI storyboard. And let's name it DMI storyboard. Now let's grab our static mesh and set material. Let's also save our dynamic material as a variable. Press compile and we'll see if this is working. Down here, you can see DMI storyboard, which is great. This is a programmatic material that we can use and we can change. Let's go to the event graph. We're gonna create a custom event here. Call it change board. We're gonna add an input. We're gonna find texture. Now there's a lot of things called texture. It may take you a second. But what we're looking for is legitimately just texture. We'll call it board. Let's create a new cinematic. Now, this should work with a master sequence or a level sequence. We're gonna use a level for now. I'm gonna call mine all boards. Let's go ahead and track our storyboard plane. We'll create a repeater event. As you can see, we already have one just sitting here. If we go to properties, we can see that it's currently unbound. Let's bind it to the change board that we made. This automatically wires everything up in the sequence director. Make sure call and editor is turned on. You'll also notice we have a payload now. Let's go ahead and add one. Now our change board is great, but it's not really doing anything. Let's add a set texture parameter value. Here's one that automatically works with the dynamic instance board material. Just connect board to the value. We'll change the name to match the one in the parameters. Now when we press play, everything runs exactly like we'd hope. Let's track our cinema camera. 
and we'll automatically get a camera cuts track. Now we get an animatic. Just remember that this event only updates whenever a new repeater is called. Now you may be wondering, hey, why would I ever do this? This doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't I just cut this somewhere else? And you know, maybe you're right. Maybe that's easier for you. For me, I'm using this in conjunction with a master sequence that allows me to toggle level visibility. That means I can go straight from a storyboard into the gray box and then into the next shot. Hope that helps and happy animating.